Okay, just about ready to get started, Andrea? I think we're ready. Thanks, Meg. Okay, that's great. We're recording. Okay, well, hello, everybody. My name is Meg Steiner. I'm our VP of Marketing here at Richardson. On behalf of Andrea, Sarah, and I today, we're thrilled to welcome you to our 30-minute webinar on DE&I and selling. Before we get started, we've got two quick housekeeping items for you. Uh, we are going to reserve some time at the end for Q&A, so feel free to submit your questions as we go or jot them down and submit them at the end using the chat or the Q&A features. Uh, we will be recording today's session, as I just mentioned, um, and we're going to send you the recording and also a copy of these slides with you this afternoon, so stay tuned for those. So let's get started. First, I'm excited to introduce you to my colleague, Sarah Doherty. Sarah is our Marketing Operations Manager, and she will be producing today's webinar. Hi, Sarah. I'm also excited to introduce you our presenter for today, Andrea Gronitsky, who is our Chief Marketing Officer here at Richardson. Andrea, I'm going to turn it over to you to get us started. Thanks, Meg. And hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. As Meg said, we're going to have a short 30-minute webinar. I feel like time just keeps getting compressed here. But we're going to cover four topics in that time today. First, we're going to talk a little bit about how DE&I initiatives drive company performance. Probably no surprise to you. Next, we'll talk a little bit more about why sales teams should care about DE&I and how to actually incorporate DE&I into your sales approach. Finally, we're going to discuss how sales leaders can build diversity, equity, and inclusion into their sales culture. And of course, we'll protect some time at the end for a little bit of Q&A, as Meg mentioned. So let's jump right in. We're going to begin by talking about how DE&I initiatives drive company performance. You know, DE&I initiatives and advancements and organizations are incredibly important, as you likely to know. Uh, you know, it's to nurture a more positive workplace experience for everyone in our companies, encourage innovation through fresh thinking and exchanges, improve retention, many, many more benefits. Diversity, equity, and inclusion provide a much broader perspective for problem solving and really for developing creative solutions for competitive advantage and greater success for your sales team. DEI creates and fosters an open learning environment for the betterment of your employees and your sales professionals, of course, in particular, which ultimately produces better quality products and services for your customers. You know, and the data shows that all of these benefits lead to better business outcomes. According to McKinsey, companies in the top quartile for gender diversity on executive teams were 25% more likely to have above average profitability than companies in the last quartile of performance in their findings. BCG found that companies that reported above average diversity on their management teams also reported innovation revenue that was 19 percentage points higher than that of companies with below average leadership diversities, 45% of total revenue versus just 26%. These are pretty compelling results, and there are many more studies out there uh, that show some of the same business outcomes that are linked to organizations that invest in diversity, equity, and inclusion priorities. It's clear that these initiatives aren't just good for our employees, they're also good for the bottom line. Now, before we move on any further, let's just re-anchor ourselves in what DE&I means, because for many folks, these are still terms that we're learning about as we bring them into our organization. So first of all, diversity. Diversity is about building a team that represents variety across race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, ethnicity, age, socioeconomic status, nationality, and others. Now, equity, equity is about offering support to team members based on their individual needs. Now, that term equity refers to fairness, justice, and it's distinguished from equality. Equality means providing the same to all. Equity is about recognizing that we don't all start from the same place and that we have different individual needs. And then, of course, inclusion. You also hear about belonging, right? D, E, and I, and B. Inclusion is about creating a work environment that is supportive, respectful, collaborative, and aims to get all employees to participate and contribute. Let's talk about your organizations a little bit. Really curious, and I bet you all might be as well. We've got a lot of folks from many different organizations here, learning leaders, sales leaders. We'd love to hear from you. How high a priority are DE&I initiatives 
in your company today, thinking about going into 2023, here we are, uh, if you can jump in and vote here, how high a priority are DE&I initiatives in your company? Very high, medium, low priority, or not a priority at all? What do you think? We'd love to hear from you. We'll wait just a minute to make sure that everybody can respond. And then we'll see where we all land. Okay, so why don't we close the poll in the interest of time share. Ah, you can see very high priority. So thrilled to hear that. I wasn't sure where these results were gonna come out. Uh, medium level priority at 28%. So excellent. It's great to hear that in the organizations that you're working in, DE&I initiatives are very high or at least a medium level priority. And that now that might be some of the reason why you're here today. Um, and we're, you know, we do see that some organizations, it's it's a low priority now still. And so there's still work to be done. We know that. But given that it's medium and high for you, this is a great topic for us to discuss then why your sales teams should care about DE&I. So first of all, according to Forrester, sales teams with leading DE&I practices boost an average lead to opportunity conversion of 54%. Meanwhile, teams lacking in DE&I focus have a conversion rate of just 26%. If you've been in sales for uh, just a minute or a very long time, you know how important conversions rates are. Building your pipeline, the most important leading indicator to then driving revenue and profitable business for your organization. So some really interesting recent findings here from Forrester. Again, love to hear from you. Jump back in here. We'd love to hear to what extent has your sales team incorporated DEI practices into their selling approach? Would you say they're fully incorporated already? You've got it all figured out and your team is off and running, somewhat or not incorporated at all. If you think about, you know, as you're answering here, the fact that, you know, we've really started to build a lot of momentum across all industries, DEI initiatives and practices. Uh, you know, it's it's been a, a few years, but not that long. And so making sure that that comes and filters its way in through the sales team and their selling practices is critically important uh, step for all of us. So let's close the poll then and see what our results are. Okay, so a little less than, this is a little bit of what we suspected and what we're hearing from our customers. You know, we still got a little bit of work to do here. So some of you 6% fully incorporated, the majority somewhat, that's great to hear. 30% not incorporated. So while you tell us your organizations are focused on DE&I, there's still a little bit of work to do uh, for your sales team and to bring it into their selling practices. So uh, happy to join you today just to talk about some practical ideas that you can take back to your sales team. You know, before we get into the what can they do, we think it's really important to set some context and for you to do this for your sales team as well, particularly if you're a sales or learning or sales enablement leader. You know, we know that there are business results to be had and higher conversion rates, of course, but more importantly, sales teams should care because their customers want to see a visible reflection of diversity, equity, and inclusion and how their partners and potential partners actually show up, right? It's a core way to demonstrate that you are customer focused and customer first in your thinking. So first of all, DNI stakeholders, they wanna work with DNI teams, right? Buying is easier for DNI stakeholders when their principles are reflected in the team that's selling to them and helping them to buy. And the selling team, your team of sales professionals, they're better equipped to understand the customer's perspective when they mirror that buying team's diversity. Put another way, right? A homogenous selling team that all looks the same is unlikely to see the customer's challenges from more than one vantage point. It seems obvious, right? And additionally, a buying team that is committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion, they're gonna to wanna to know that they're working with like-minded companies. It is about building trust. And they don't. They might not wanna pursue DE&I initiatives and principles internally, only to abandon them externally. Sales team, secondly, with DE&I practices, they just have a wider perspective. The buying process, we all know, we've talked about this a lot, is difficult for stakeholders. And that's, you know, why is that? Well, it gets compounded because the buying team in any buying situation is often very unclear about their needs in the early stages. They may think they know, but their needs form over time. And the first idea that they have about the potential solution, that's going to shift uh, and likely doesn't match exactly what they were thinking when they end up at a final solution and make a purchase. Uh, and that just gets compounded when you've got a lot of stakeholders in the mix. Having a lot of good different opinions is great, but it does up the ante for sales professionals. 
And this is where, you know, really effective sellers can actually show even more value. They're able to help their buyers clarify their needs. And doing so becomes much easier when your selling team has a DE&I focus because they have a wider purview. They're a more diverse team that is going to give them, by nature of the very fact that they're all working together to serve that customer or prospect, a more wider purview and be better able to work with that customer. As a result of that diversity, also, they're faster and they're more incisive in their ability to identify the customer's core challenges and needs and make some accurate assessments. Now, there's some proof in this, right? The idea is evidence, some research from Princeton University that you can certainly look up after today's webinar, but it shows that a diverse team is 58% more likely to price stocks accurately than a homogenous group. This is because diverse teams are shown to be more objective, more thorough, and more likely to reveal each other's otherwise unseen biases. They simply see more, right? And so diverse selling teams can do a better job working with your diverse buyers. Finally, DE&I uh, allows information to flow up the sales organization and not just from leadership all the way down. So again, sales organizations, you know, they perform better when leadership is able to get a ground level view of what's happening out amongst the sales team. Now, commonly, particularly the higher you go and the larger the organization, you know, leadership has the 30, 60,000 foot view, and that's important, but it's not enough. They need the ground level view as well. And leaders, sales leaders in particular, sales enablement leaders, they can get this ground level view by creating a setting in which information can flow up through the organization. And a DE&I focus does exactly that. The purpose is really to help give every single team member a voice and each person can use that voice to call attention to challenges out in the field that might be preventing sales from moving forward. And sales leaders can benefit from this dynamic by encouraging more feedback from the team. They can also create an environment of psychological safety in which sellers know that they're not gonna suffer professionally if they voice an idea that's unpopular. Leaders need to make sure that they are soliciting that feedback up. And again, this dynamic is really important if you're somebody on the call who's responsible for capability development, whether you're in learning or sales enablement, thinking about soliciting that feedback from the sales team so that you can deliver just-in-time learning that's really going to benefit each unique individual seller in the moment of need. And the way that you can figure that out is by setting up an environment where people feel safe and it's encouraged for them to give feedback up in the organization. Okay, so let's get a little bit more practical here and talk about some ways that you can incorporate DE&I into your selling approach. Now, it's important, first of all, that sales professionals have a plan to understand each customer's unique set of DE&I priorities. Now, this is true whether or not they are selling a solution that advances DE&I efforts in any way. It, you don't have to be somebody that's selling an HR solution to HR leaders directly aimed at driving DE&I, right? So why is it important if you're not in that position, if you're selling a completely different product set? Well, first of all, it's always important to understand the customer's full scope of strategic priorities so that you can understand how the ones related to your product fit into the full picture. There may be linkages that aren't, you know, initially obvious to your sales professional without asking. But also, by learning about DE&I initiatives, your sales professionals can learn a lot about the company culture and perhaps even find ways that their solution helps build that culture overall. Okay, so what you're gonna see here is a questioning funnel that we teach here at Richardson, and it's the category of needs and questions a seller should be asking. Now, DE&I questions can sit in any of these categories, from understanding important DE&I initiatives uh, at the top here and objectives that the customer is trying to achieve, all the way down through how an, an individual buyer might personally benefit in their role. But let's look at some examples here to bring this to life a little bit. So at the top here, when you're trying to learn about a customer's DE&I objectives or priorities, a salesperson might ask something like, we've spoken about many of your initiatives. Some are tightly aligned to human capital. On that note, I'm curious, do you have any DE&I initiatives underway? Another question might be other customers that we have spoken uh, spoken with who want to drive the same outcomes as you are also incorporating DEI initiatives. To what extent are, you, extent are you doing that here as well? And how high a priority are those initiatives versus the others you've shared? 
you're thinking about current situation or level of satisfaction, future needs, here's some additional suggested questions. How are you solving DE and I related challenges today? What feedback have you received from staff? How might these DE and I challenges or initiatives evolve over the next few years? How might that transform your business? And then personal needs and decision-based type questions. How involved are you personally in the DE&I initiatives we've discussed? How might that involvement shape your career? Who's driving those DE&I initiatives? Where are they in the process? And how will they drive consensus? Now, remember that the way a seller asks these questions also really matters. Sometimes questions in this arena can be a little bit sensitive. So here are some of those best practices to remind you of. Supporting benefit. Sellers should always preface their question with a customer-focused supporting benefit to encourage that customer to share information. They could also use trading, right? Give to get. Preface their question by trading information about what maybe experience they have or other things that they've heard to encourage the customer to share information while building credibility. And acknowledging, acknowledging what the customer has said to lead into the question and maintain a balanced give and get ratio, strengthen that rapport and encourage openness. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list. And I think the best way that we all learn is from one another. We've got a lot of folks on the call right now. I bet as you were listening to some of those questions, maybe some others popped into your mind. And in the uh, effort of sharing with one another, I'd love for you to go to chat and if you thought of any other or are using any other good questions that you're willing to share for the group's benefit, please go ahead in and chat some questions that you think would be valuable for your sales team to ask, perhaps ones that they're already using. Make sure that you're chatting to everyone, not just the hosts and panelists, but we'd love to hear if you have any suggested questions that you think would be good for your sales team to ask if they're trying to really understand a customer's DE&I initiatives. Now, I haven't seen anything come across yet, but if you've got a couple of questions that you're working on, we'd love to see them. And sometimes it does take a little bit of time for those to populate. As we were thinking about these questions, remember, if you are a sales professional that is selling or you're responsible for sales professionals that have a solution that is very DE&I focused, you're going to ask a completely different set of questions, right? You're going to ask a lot more in depth. But if you've got sales professionals that for whatever reason, you know, are not necessarily selling a solution that is DE&I focused, um, that is absolutely still an area where they should be asking DE&I type questions. Now, there is a chance that our chat is not working because we always, especially with this many people on, get some chat. So I'm going to move on, but if others come up, I will come back to them. So let's move on and talk about some other best practices. So, you know, another way to incorporate DE&I into your selling approach is by focusing on all decision makers. DE&I decision making, especially in a DE&I focused company, um, can really be shared. This is part of the, this is the equity inclusion, the E and I, right, of DE&I. This means that the challenge of compelling every single stakeholder is greater when working with a DE&I focused customer for your sales professionals. Sellers who understand this, they're going to want to avoid the trap of making the most vocal stakeholders you know, or mistaking listening to the most vocal stakeholders versus the most influential ones. Now, complicating this challenge is the fact that stakeholders in the DE&I company may be further apart than the seller is used to. That is, with more diversity comes greater variation in opinions, and that's okay, but that is more of a challenge for your sales professionals. And that means sellers, they likely need to unite a more disparate group. Now, if they're aware of this, your sales professionals, they can take steps to understand who is aligned with the solution, who is not, et cetera. Doing so early is really critical because it might take a little bit of time to bring that group together. But it's so important because you really likely need alignment if they're going to move forward with your solution. Now, it helps to think about different stakeholders from the view and this concept of value lens, which you see on our slide here. Uh, it's This is about how different stakeholders view the concept of value, regardless of the solution or the need. Uh, you know, some have, let's, let's walk through these. Some have a financial lens, right? They think, what is the cost and how much are we gonna save and gain in comparison to what we spend? Now, it's easy to assume this is the CFO that thinks this way, but you wouldn't wanna assume, right? It does not matter the role, a lot of folks, depend, depending on how they view value, might look through a financial lens. 
a technical lens. Somebody who looks through a technical lens when they're evaluating the value of a solution, they think to themselves, to what extent does the solution meet our requirements? What unique capabilities does this solution have? A strategic lens, they may be thinking, how does this solution help us achieve our business objective? And then a partnership lens. How will this partner help us after the sale? What do they bring to the table beyond the solution itself? How much do we trust this company? Remembering that different people view value in different ways will help your sales team look for clues, tailor their positioning of value based on each individual unique stakeholder, and highlight the most important drivers for that stakeholder when they're speaking with them. If you think about it, doing this is such a clear demonstration by the sales professional to the customer that they are focused on the individual, unique, diverse needs of each stakeholder. And that is really putting a concept into an action that the customer can truly see. Now, another way to incorporate DE&I into your selling approach is helping your teams develop the EQ needed to surface unspoken opinions. So what you see here are critical selling skills that we teach. If you've worked with Richardson before, these are probably very familiar. Presence, relating, questioning, listening, positioning, and checking. But let's put a DE&I lens on these skills and talk about how they can be useful. Remember that a DEI initiative or initiatives are really a constant work in progress for a company. It takes a lot of time to get it right. And even then, it, it takes continued focus and effort. One reason for that is that, you know, it does take individuals longer to become comfortable offering their opinion, especially if that opinion contradicts others in the group. So it's just going to take time for everyone to continue to move the DEI ball along in their organization. Now, that discomfort, that dissent, that people aren't necessarily willing to come out and share their opinions right away is pretty well documented. Uh, there's a book, you may have read it by Susan Cain called Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. Uh, and there she presents research from Emory University, a neuroscientist there who found that people who disagree with the group experienced heightened activation in the amygdala. Part of that, part of the brain, you probably know, that's associated with discomfort of social rejection, sometimes called that pain of independence. Put simply, inclusion can happen instantly, but participation, that happens gradually. So what does that mean for your sales professionals? Well, they have a responsibility to surface the opinions of quiet stakeholders, frankly, because if those concerns remain hidden, they can't be addressed. So the customer and the seller both will benefit from hearing equally from all stakeholders, and these skills are so important there. Additionally, we mentioned before, some buyers may not be fully comfortable talking about their DE&I initiatives in the company yet. Maybe they're not directly involved. Perhaps they don't really understand them fully. Relating can be a powerful skill here. You know, for many organizations, DE&I initiatives are still relatively new. There is excitement, there's a lot of promise, but the work is sometimes a little unclear and can be challenging to get right. Relating and connecting with customers on the intent of what they're trying to do, not necessarily the accuracy of their initiative or the rate of their progress so far, but a seller's ability to relate to the intent of what that buyer or that organization is trying to achieve with their DEI initiatives can be a really powerful way to build trust and openness. And finally, you know, listening is so critical here. All right, we need to listen to each stakeholder. And in particular, if they're talking about DEI initiatives, listen for vague or unclear words to clarify and drill down. So a customer might say something like, you know, we accept diverse views. A seller could ask a question like to drill down and learn a little bit more. Well, I'd like to learn more about that. What behaviors are you looking for in employees to know that your organization is successful at accepting diverse views? The customer might say, well, you know, we really want to intentionally encourage employees to express constructive criticism and offer their own ideas. So again, using these skills to really build trust encourage openness and authenticity is very important when you're asking customers about their DEI initiatives and priorities. Boy, 30 minutes goes quick, doesn't it? We're almost at the end of our time here, but one more. Finally, encourage your sales team to rethink assumptions that they might have about the buying team. You know, it's no coincidence that DEI initiatives are on the rise as more millennials are ascending to leadership roles. The research shows that millennials are making diversity, equity, and inclusion a priority. 
Now, for experienced sales professionals, this can be a bit of a change. Only recently have millennials had the level of decision-making power that they enjoy today. Therefore, it's time to sellers to make sure they move on and any old beliefs that they've had, and they're really focusing on what all of the different types of stakeholders might want. And while millennials may or may not be in the C-suite quite yet, many of them have proximity to the C-suite, and those positions give them a level of influence strong enough, certainly, to make or break a potential uh, deal for a sales professional. So sales salespeople need to be able to engage and listen to each stakeholder. They need to think about what position that stakeholder has in the buying team and how best to work with them. If, for an example, again, a millennial buyer who, according to First Forrester, has a greater propensity to make DE&I a priority, is not yet the economic decision maker, they could be a key influencer, they could be a change champion. Getting them aligned to your solution means understanding their drivers and unique needs as much as the economic decision maker. Okay, so finally, let's talk about how sales leaders can think about building DE&I into their sales culture. Again, diversity, it's more than about just having the right mix of people. It's having the skills to unite them all together. Creating a diverse group of employee or players on the playing field for a sales team is of little of use if they can't work as a team, particularly when we talk about extended revenue teams today. So creating that cohesive sales team means aligning everyone to a common sales language. Why do you need to do that? Well, it creates better communication. The exchange of ideas becomes more fluid. Sales leaders, sales enablement leaders, they can do this by establishing a single sales methodology and language. Why? That may seem counterintuitive, but why? Because diverse teams work best when the goal is clear. So giving them a goal and understanding what success means. Clarity on that goal is going to allow for individual needs and challenges to surface and to be addressed collaboratively. Equity is all about making sure that you're giving every team member access to the tools that they need. An equitable workplace is one in which each person receives those resources they need to succeed. You know, technology, personalization, AI, they allow us to now learn and teach and scale in a way that was not previously possible to us. So sales leaders really need to continue to focus on and invest in performance support at a unique personalized level and frankly, not take the easy way out of a one size fits all approach. We used to have to do that. It's possible now not to do that with the use of technology, personalization, and AI. And finally, inclusion. You know, sellers need to feel included in the organization's success. And one of the main drivers there is to make sure that you've got highly skilled frontline sales managers who know how to coach. Okay, with that, we have just a couple of minutes left. I'm going to turn it back over to Meg. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, we do have time for one or two quick questions, but before we do get to the Q&A, we want to let you know to make sure you contact us if you're interested in learning more about how we can equip your sales teams with these skills and capabilities that Andrea just covered and how to incorporate these DE&I initiatives into their selling approach. So we have a Richardson's curricu Connected Curriculum here and is a collection of sales training programs. And those programs are really built to work together, build upon each other across different roles, various capabilities capabilities, and they drive common language, clear approach, and really allow for sales performance at scale. So please be sure to contact us using that contact information we have here on the slide. Uh, we had two questions come in, Andrea, if you have a quick, quick minute to answer yep. them. Uh, the first one is, what do you see as the top two skills needed to have these conversations about DEI? and It's rarely the top two. It's usually the top one, but okay, I'll try to do the top two. And I'm going to... Um, well, first, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to say questioning and listening. I'm going to sort of say that's the flip side of the same coin. So that's that's one skill. But we talked about the power of questioning and listening. I think that is so critically important. Helping your teams to develop a new set of questions and practicing them and, you know, sh sharing with them the importance of really listening and drilling down, particularly in this arena of DE&I, to make sure they have clarity around the customer's priorities is super important. And then the second skill, I would say, um, I like to call it connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit about positioning, but making sure that you're doing your sales professionals are doing the work of connecting the dots and articulating how your solution can help, whether or not it's a DE and I focused solution or not. They have to do the work of connecting the dots back and articulating their value in the context of those priorities they heard about, and not just assuming that the customer can connect the dots themselves. That's a tough thing to do, but I think that's a critically important skill, particularly as we focus on DE and I initiatives today. Love that. Thanks, Andrea. 
Uh, one, la one last question. So how should managers, sales managers, incorporate DEI into their processes? Another good question. I think, you know, for sales managers, they're so critically important here. I mean, we talked just very briefly about the power of coaching. You know, sales managers um, who have learned how to developmentally coach can, can really use that skill to the next level now, um, particularly in thinking about building DE&I into their sales team's culture. You know, questioning by asking versus telling is so important for building skill and for people feeling like, uh, you know, they are valued and their unique needs are being addressed. I also think checking in and, and scheduling time for managers to check in with their team. If there's a big life event that occurred or certainly yearly to talk about career goals, those are good times to start to open up these conversations about how those individual sales professionals are feeling, whether they're feeling like they belong, it's a collaborative or diverse environment, and what that sales manager and their unique role can do to help continue to build uh, a sales culture that's got a DEI focus for them. That's great. Thank you, Andrea. Um, we're going to let everybody go now because it is uh, half past the hour. Um, we want to invite you to scan the QR code that you see on your screen there to follow us on LinkedIn, where we offer sales tips and best practices every day. So thank you again for joining us. We'll be sending you the recording and the slides after this meeting. We hope that you all have a great day. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, everyone. Bye.